Here is an animated 3D work instruction where the entire procedure has been rendered to a single page. In the 3D view, you see an animation of the process. Down below, you see the task and process list. As the animation plays in the 3D view, it's cross-linked to the process list so the appropriate tasks highlight. Animations can contain a lot of different features, including cross-sectioning, as we see here, as well as the ability to highlight certain objects and force the user to select them before moving forward. That way they acknowledge they've seen the object or, in this case coming up, read the note. The animation can be played forwards and backwards, and if you were to select a task in the task list down below, it would show that particular animation, jump right to it. This is one way to look at animated 3D work instructions. Here is another animated 3D work instruction. In this case, each process has been rendered to a separate page or worksheet in Excel. Right now we're looking at the second process, the assembly of the shaft pulley. As before, you can see the animation in the 3D view and it's cross-linked to the task list down below so that as the animation plays, the appropriate task is highlighted and vice versa. If you were to select a task below, it would play that animation in the 3D view. In addition to this, there's a parts list off to the side, which contains the parts that are involved in that particular procedure. There's also further information about the process up above in the work instruction sheet header. All of this additional information gives more context to those who are looking to learn the procedures. Here is the same process animated in a slightly different way. In this case, the task number is assigned and shown during the animation. This sometimes makes the order of operations clear, especially when there are multiple steps on the same view. This also goes to show that the same information can be rendered in different ways to achieve different goals. Speaking of which, here's an example of printable work instructions. In this case, instead of a 3D model, each page features a 2D illustration that was derived directly from the model. These instructions can be reviewed in Excel or printed and taken directly to the shop floor. Here's an interactive design review document that lists all of the issues on one page. When you select an issue down below, it highlights in the 3D view. In this case, we're looking at a cable routing issue. Here's a clearance problem. You can zoom in and rotate to get a better understanding of the issue. Here's another clearance issue. In this case, it's a cross-section view, but somebody has already reviewed it and noted that everything is okay. And here's another cross-section view that's worked out fine. Here's an interactive design review document where each issue is on its own page. As you flip through, you see there's an illustration along with text describing the issue. But even though this looks like a 2D document, there's a 3D model behind it. You can pop the 3D model out, and when you select the illustration, it will bring up that issue in 3D. So there you can rotate, zoom in, and fully understand the issue. Here we have an interactive 3D parts list with images. 
But again, this was derived from a 3D model, so you can pop out a 3D view and see the whole model. The 3D view is linked to the images, so when you select a part image, it shows only that part in the 3D view. There you can rotate, pan, and examine it to get a full understanding of the part that you're looking at. And here is an interactive 3D bill of materials. As you can see, there's a 3D view, which allows you to interact with the model. 2D illustrations that are tied to the view so that when you select the illustration, the view goes back to the configuration from where the illustration was made. The view is also tied to the parts list on the right hand side so that when you select an item in the parts list, it highlights in the 3D view and vice versa. Selecting in the view highlights the part in the parts list. You can then apply the snapshots again and it maintains the interactivity both with the 3D view and the parts list. Now some of the things you can do with the free viewer are to examine the model as we're doing here. as well as create cross sections. This allows you to see inside the model and get a better understanding of the full assembly. Cross sections can be saved or discarded. You can also measure the model. In this case, let's measure the distance between a couple of points. How about the centers of these holes? The measurement is now part of the model and it's in 3D space so that you can rotate around and see the model and the measurement at the same time. You can also apply the snapshot and the measurement will still be there. You can also create notes. In this case, the default value for the note is the part name. So here's the tail pitch control yoke. Here's the left side. And here's the right side. Again, these are 3D notes, so they are visible as you rotate around the model. You can do all this and more with the free viewer Lattice 3D Reporter. Now let's go ahead and create an interactive 3D document using Lattice 3D Reporter from Microsoft Excel. Here you see Microsoft Excel with a blank worksheet. When you install Lattice 3D Reporter, it gives you the Lattice ribbon here. The first thing we'd like to do is insert a 3D model. So let's choose where in the worksheet we'd like to insert the model. I'm going to draw out that area, go ahead and say insert and replace and it gives you a choice of models to insert. I'm gonna select our tail assembly here. Go ahead and open it. And here you see the interactive 3D model embedded in the spreadsheet. Now we can add additional things, including snapshots to this worksheet. So let's go ahead and create a snapshot image. Let's start by selecting the initial snapshot that we want to insert and then draw out the area on the worksheet where we want to insert it. So let's go here and now insert the snapshot. This has created a 2D image that can be cross-linked to the 3D model so that when we interact with the 3D model and then click on the 2D image, it puts the model back into the original configuration. 
we can go ahead and insert another snapshot as well. In this case, let's make it the illustration snapshot. And now you can see that we've got two snapshots that both interact with the 3D model. In addition to 2D images, we can also extract other data from the model and insert that in the worksheet. Let's go ahead and create a list. There are many kinds of data that we can insert. That's part data, assembly data, annotations, dimensions, even processes. Let's go ahead and create the disassembly parts list. And this allows us to choose which properties get exported to the spreadsheet. Uh, in this case, we're going to do the node number, the name, and the quantity. OK, Lattice 3D Reporter is telling us where this data will be inserted on the spreadsheet. If we're OK with that, let's go ahead and say yes. And now let's fit the columns. This data too is cross-linked to the 3D model. So if we go ahead and select an item in the worksheet here, in the list, we can see it highlighted in the 3D model. And that cross-linking goes both ways. Selecting in the model highlights the data in the sheet as well. And again, we can go back and change our model view and the selection behavior is maintained. So you can see just how quick and easy it is to go ahead and create interactive 3D documents using Lattice 3D Reporter for Microsoft Excel. But even though it's easy to create 3D documents from your models, you don't want to have to do that every time. That's why Lattice 3D Reporter supports automatically publishing interactive technical documentation from your data. Here is a reporter template. It has titles, space for the 3D view, the parts list, and other information that's extracted from your 3D model. These templates are fully customizable, so you can add your company logo, follow all your company documentation standards, even add live links to other systems that you use. To create a technical document, click on Create Report. Reporter will ask you to select a model, and we're going to choose the tail assembly again. And now it is reading the data and using it to populate the output document. All right, report creation is complete. And you can see we have here a fully interactive 3D document. We can select in the parts list and it highlights in the 3D view and vice versa. If we slide down, we'll see that there's snapshots. And like before, the snapshots are also selectable and interactive with the 3D views. Now, we actually created this document manually here, but you can actually configure Lattice 3D Reporter to be part of your publication process so that it will automatically generate these documents as your models get created and released. We've seen how Lattice 3D Reporter enables you to manually or automatically create interactive technical documentation from your 3D models. But with the help of Adobe Acrobat, it enables you to save those documents as PDF as well. To create a 3D PDF document, click on the 3D PDF Output button. Acrobat PDF Maker is asking us which sheets to include in the output PDF. We'll include both of them and go ahead and convert to PDF. And in less than a minute, Lattice 3D Reporter and Adobe Acrobat have created a 3D PDF document. This document is fully interactive. You can click on the 3D view and it highlights in the parts list and vice versa. And you can also rotate the, the model and click on the snapshots to bring it back to the original configuration. We're viewing this document in Adobe Acrobat right now, but the same functionality is in the free Adobe Reader. 
So your customers will be able to interact with this document with the Adobe Reader that they probably already have installed on their systems.